Today we're going to be talking about heat and heat transfer for radiologic technologists. If that sounds good, click below and subscribe and the little bell icon so you get notified when we release new content. So coming up, the basic physics about heat and heat transfer at HowRadiologyWorks.com. hoo So that's the last time you're going to have to hear my uh, Al Pacino impression. But today we are talking about heat. Specifically, we're talking about heat and heat transfer. For radiologic technologists, as a background, or students going into radiology, as a background, we just want to talk about what is heat? You know, when it's super hot outside or super cold outside, what's the difference really? What's causing what we perceive as heat? And it's actually just thermal energy. And so, again, Kinetic energy, like we talked about in our last episode, if you didn't see that one, check it out about the difference between potential and kinetic energy. And kinetic energy, as we talked about, is the energy of things that they have in motion. And these, again, are random motions that are going on all the time. And there's just going to be more of them when we have a hotter environment. And then things are going to be moving more slowly when we have a cooler environment. And how do we quantify heat? We quantify it as, think about one, usually we use water as our reference. So this is water, so H2O, and it is one gram of water. Just as a side, that's going to be a cubic centimeter is going to be the same as one gram of water. And if we take that gram of water and then we heat it up by one degree Celsius. So again, we take water, we heat it up by one degree Celsius, and that just one gram of water heated by one degree Celsius, that is called a calorie. When we talk about calories in terms of food that we're eating, that's actually kilocalories that we're talking about, but they just drop the kilo just for simplicity in labeling on packages. But calorie here is the amount of energy it's gonna take to heat the water, one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And we wanna talk about the mechanisms that can be used to heat. So in general, we have a few different mechanisms that can be used for heat transfer. And they, we're gonna list them in order of how effective they are in transferring the heat. So, sorry, I should call it like this. So, the ones at the top are more effective and then the ones at the bottom are less effective. So, conduction is when the heat is transferred directly so those two materials have to be touching one another. So this is the most efficient and it requires contact. So an example of this is the conduction and an x-ray tube, the conduction from the rotor that's moving to the oil. So again, this is two things that are touching directly, and that's transferring the bulk heat, which is on the big anode. It, we, go, we have anode connected to rotor, then that bulk amount of heat is gonna be transferred most efficiently via that conduction to the oil. Then convection. So convection is what occurs, for instance, um, inside of a convection oven. And it's something that can occur in, sorry, in air or in a liquid. And what's happening is the hot molecules are actually being moved by something, for instance, that fan in the convection oven. And then finally, is radiative. 
So radiation, again, this is the least efficient. This is when, for instance, on the target, you have your electrons hitting the target, the anode material. So again, we've drawn this before, but you have electrons coming in and then hitting some anode. And then this target is where the x-rays will come off in this direction. And that target is going to cool by radiative or there's not something else that's forcing that heat to get pulled away. So that, for example, here we're, we're talking about that anode cooling. So what I wanted to get across here is the concept of heat and heat transfer. And just so you can learn at a high level the different possible methods for heat transfer, again, conduction is going to work the best. So you get those two materials touching one another. That's why if you, you know, if you touch a really cold pole in the, in the winter, something like that, it's gonna have the best heat transfer. And then convection is when there's some active movement there, for instance, in an air or liquid, and radiation is the least effective. And in that case, we gave the example of the anode cooling. If you're interested in heat, Definitely check out the temperature scale one. We're gonna be talking about Kelvin and Celsius and those conversions that are 